join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. In the ancient lands stretching across modern-day Lebanon, Syria, Israel, Palestine, and Jordan, a powerful civilization once thrived, enigmatic, resilient, and deeply misunderstood. These were the Canaanites, a people mentioned over 150 times in the Bible, frequently cast as adversaries of the Israelites and condemned by later Jewish and Christian traditions. For millennia, their legacy has been filtered through the theological lens of their biblical portrayal, often reduced to a people destined for divine judgment. But what if that narrative was incomplete? What if the people known as the Canaanites weren't wiped out, as traditionally believed, but instead survived, and even became the genetic ancestors of modern populations in the Middle East? Thanks to breakthroughs in ancient DNA technology, history is undergoing a seismic shift. New genomic studies have uncovered astonishing data from the remains of Bronze Age Canaanites dating back more than 3,700 years. By extracting and sequencing DNA from bones discovered in burial chambers in ancient city ruins, particularly in places like Sidon, one of the major Canaanite city-states, scientists have reconstructed the genetic profile of a people long considered lost to time. The findings are rewriting both biblical interpretation and historical anthropology. The first major revelation came from a 2017 study led by researchers at Harvard University and the Wellcome Sanger Institute in the UK. They recovered whole genomes from five ancient individuals buried in Sidon, Lebanon. These remains, remarkably well-preserved, allowed the team to compare ancient DNA with that of modern populations living in the region. The result? Around 90% of the genetic ancestry of modern-day Lebanese people could be traced directly back to the ancient Canaanites. This suggests a near-unbroken line of descent over nearly four millennia, defying the common assumption that these people were exterminated or absorbed entirely by incoming groups. The Canaanites, it turns out, were not completely destroyed by the Israelite conquest as described in the Book of Joshua. Archaeological and now genetic evidence points to cultural continuity and coexistence, rather than total displacement or genocide. Sites like Hazer, Megiddo, and Lachish, powerful Canaanite cities referenced in biblical conquest narratives, show signs of destruction, but they were also rebuilt and re-inhabited, often by culturally similar people. This continuity was already suggested by archaeology, but DNA has now confirmed it at the biological level. This revelation has rocked not just biblical historians, but also theologians and Middle Eastern communities. It challenges a deeply entrenched narrative that placed the Canaanites as other, a people doomed by divine mandate, and instead paints them as an essential root of the Levantine family tree. The image of the Canaanites as idolatrous pagans to be vanquished is now being reconciled with the reality that their descendants live among us today, often unaware of their ancient heritage. The Canaanites were not one unified empire, but rather a collection of city-states sharing common languages, religious practices, and trade networks. Their influence stretched far and wide. They were seafarers and traders, connecting Egypt, Mesopotamia, and the Mediterranean in a vast commercial web. They worshipped deities like El, Baal, and Asherah, names that would later appear in altered forms in the Hebrew Bible. Their writing system, an early alphabet developed from Egyptian hieroglyphs, became the foundation for Phoenician script, which in turn influenced Greek and Latin alphabets. The irony of history is that this accursed people may have laid the intellectual foundations of Western civilization. Even more startling is what the DNA studies suggest about the origins of the Canaanites themselves. By examining genomic data, researchers have concluded that the Canaanites were a mix of local Neolithic populations and incoming groups from the Iranian plateau. This corroborates archaeological evidence of early migrations and cultural diffusion during the Early and Middle Bronze Age. It also hints at a broader, more interconnected ancient world than previously imagined, one in which the ancestors of the Canaanites were part of large-scale population movements that shaped the Near East. Furthermore, the genetic legacy of the Canaanites is not limited to Lebanon. While the Lebanese population appears to show the clearest link due to geographic continuity, other modern Levantine groups, 
Palestinians, Syrians, and even some Jewish communities share portions of this ancient heritage. This blurs the lines often drawn between us and them in modern religious or ethnic discourse. The very people who have been cast historically as rivals, Jews and Canaanites, might share more in common genetically than once thought. These findings also deepen our understanding of identity in the ancient world. The Israelites themselves, emerging in the highlands of Canaan during the Late Bronze Age, likely shared much with their Canaanite neighbors, from language to customs to genetic makeup. Scholars like Israel Finkelstein and William Dever have long argued that the early Israelites were not foreign invaders, but rather an offshoot of Canaanite society. DNA now lends credibility to this hypothesis. It suggests that the Israelites and Canaanites weren't starkly different ethnic groups, but rather part of a shared cultural and biological continuum. Of course, history is not just about genetics. It's about story, memory, and meaning. The biblical authors, writing centuries after the events they describe, shape a narrative to serve theological and national purposes. In doing so, they recast the Canaanites as the eternal other, forgetting or perhaps deliberately ignoring the common ancestry they shared. But DNA, unlike human memory, doesn't lie. It carries the imprint of our ancestors, and sometimes it tells stories we'd long forgotten or tried to silence. For descendants of Canaanite peoples today, whether Lebanese, Palestinian, or otherwise, these revelations offer a powerful sense of continuity. They affirm that their ancestors were not obliterated, not erased from history, but instead survived and adapted, passing on their bloodlines and cultural echoes through time. For others, it's a call to rethink simplistic narratives of good versus evil, chosen versus condemned, and to embrace a more nuanced view of ancient identity. In the end, the DNA of the Canaanites tells a story that both confirms and challenges the Bible. It validates the existence of a powerful ancient people in the Levant, confirms their cultural influence, and reveals their survival against all odds. But it also undermines the notion of total conquest and elimination. It reminds us that history, like genetics, is never as clean or simple as we might hope. The true identity of the Canaanites is no longer just a matter of faith or speculation. It's written in the bones of their descendants, in the alleles and chromosomes that link past to present. And as science continues to dig deeper into the genetic archives of our species, more forgotten peoples may rise from the dust, not as myth, but as memory restored 